Welcome back to the next live show. As promised, fellow developer advocate Kelsey Hightower is here to join us. Thanks for being here, Kelsey. I'm happy to be here. So earlier we heard TK's keynote. Uh, what are you, you most excited about? Well, given my background in Kubernetes, I'm most excited about um, Anthos, which is kind of giving Kubernetes to more people in their environment. So you can run it on-prem, you can run it on Google Cloud. Also like the addition of Istio, so giving people the ability to manage the networking plane like they do for their compute. And I think the other thing I'm most happy about is more managed databases. So now having SQL Server. Lots of our customers ask for SQL Server. So pairing managed databases with something like Kubernetes is kind of a perfect match. Right. And Google has a really strong tradition of developer teams passing on creative software innovations to our emerging developer audiences. Um, what could you, tools can you tell us about that are also empowering our enterprise developers with years of experience in proprietary systems? Yeah, I think for the biggest thing is like meeting developers where they are. So kind of integrating with their IDEs, giving them familiar open source technology. So a lot of developers are running things like Docker and Kubernetes on their laptop. Uh, Envoy, packaged in Istio. So what we're doing is taking all these open source projects that you may be using on your own machines, or maybe even internally, and we're just adding a lot of that support stuff that you would need to run it in production in the enterprise. So we can see that values are shifting up the stack with higher level sets of services and new abstractions. How is automation evolving the developer experience? Previously, we've been trying to automate a lot of bad practices, right? Like if you automate directly on the virtual machine, for example, now you're starting to automate around scripts. We had a lot of configuration management tools, but the APIs weren't there. Now as we move up the stack, things like Kubernetes give us a declarative interface for deploying on a distributed system. So containers, batch jobs, cron jobs. So now when you start to think about automation, you're finally targeting APIs. So what we were able to do for traditional software development, we're now able to do for infrastructure. So bringing things like Istio, which gives you a declarative API for the networking, things like our serverless add-on, give you a declarative API for your serverless stack. So when you look across the spectrum now for infrastructure, you're now programming finally towards well-defined APIs. So this is sort of supporting people where they are. And I want to talk about GKE on-prem and hybrid workloads. What are some of the benefits of it and what can you, what can sysadmins kind of reap from that? Yeah, I think since Kubernetes came out, everyone was like, I want it, right? And GKE, when you click that button, you just get this magical cluster, production ready, ready to go. And the next thing is like, well, what about my existing environment? And many people have kind of tried to do it and not everyone has the same level of expertise or time. So the nice thing about this is that we're going to take GKE, the same bits that we use to host on GCP, we're now bringing that into your data center. So we're giving people clear guidance on the lower level requirements, and then we just layer GKE on top, and then we give you the same APIs, the same control planes. So if you're using things like Terraform on GCP, you're now able to point that same stack in your on-prem environment, get that same workflow that you love so much on GKE. Nice. Now, Kubernetes is being adopted and adapted to meet more and more technical needs. And tell us about how GKE Hub helps admins with hybrid environments do their jobs better. Yeah, so GKE Hub, so once you kind of get a taste of Kubernetes, the next thing is you want Kubernetes everywhere, right? Every problem you see, you want to rub Kubernetes on top of it. <laughs> so a lot of our customers have more than one cluster. If you think about it, a lot of our customers that value high availability, they'll have a cluster per region or per zone. So once you start to have a collection of clusters, even you bring in on-prem into the mix, you need a place to aggregate all of those things. So what GKE Hub represents is the ability to aggregate all of your Kubernetes clusters, even the ones on-prem. And then once you have that, you have a centralized place to do things like policy management. So once you have a Kubernetes cluster, the thing you have to think about is security across all those clusters. And one thing that's kind of hard or error prone is if you have to try to figure out how to get your configuration correct across all of those clusters. So the hub is going to be the anchor point where we build a lot of those additional tools that allow you to manage everything from a central place. Nice. All right, well, thanks, Kelsey. We really appreciate you taking the time. Awesome. Thank you.